I built a buffer pool manager for an open source relational database management system called BusTub. BusTub was built by the Carnegie Mellon database group using C++ to be used as an educational tool for graduate level students. In particular, students of the 15445 class, Intro to Database Systems, which is the course that I'm currently taking in my spare time. BusTub supports basic SQL and even comes with an interactive shell, just like the popular Postgres shell. At the beginning of the course, BusTub is not fully functional. The idea is that you, as a student, build out the critical subsystems and eventually bring the DBMS up to its full functionality as a semester progresses. I highly recommend this course if you want to supercharge your C++ skills, because this course will throw you in the deep end and you'll have to learn things like move semantics, multi-threading, using lock guards and mutexes to protect shared data, resource acquisition is initialization or RAII, promises, futures, conditional variables, a bunch of different standard library containers, you know, the full gamut of what C++ has to offer. This course is difficult. It was a struggle for me to get 100% of the tests passing because I had to learn a lot about the C++ language and I made a bunch of mistakes, but through perseverance and hours of research, I was able to finish the assignment with a 100% score. If I can offer any advice, it's to not give up, enjoy the learning process, and also desk checking all of your functions is a great way to diagnose any issues because it forces you to read your code line by line, and eventually, you know, you'll fix all your mistakes. This is what finally got me over the line to get all of these tests passing. To get BusTub fully operational, the first task is for us to implement the buffer pool manager. The buffer pool is responsible for moving physical memory pages back and forth from main memory to disk. It allows the DBMS to support databases that are larger than the amount of memory available to the system. Normally the operating system will be in charge of managing pages like this, but a lot of the big DBMSs implement their own custom subsystems for a few reasons, mainly performance optimization, because a custom buffer pool manager allows you to tailor your memory management strategies to suit your specific database workloads. Here's how it works specifically for BusTub. When BusTub needs to use any piece of data, it checks to see whether the data is in the buffer pool. The data are stored as pages inside the buffer pool and each page sits inside a frame of which there are a limited amount because we only have a limited amount of main memory. If the data is already in one of the pages here, then it's all good and BusTub can use that data immediately. However, if the data is not in the pool, then we have to fetch it from disk. But this presents a problem. Thinking ahead, when we do eventually get the page from disk, where do we put it if all the frames in our buffer pool are already full? This is where the LRUK replacer system comes in. The frames inside the buffer pool are managed by the LRUK replacer object. And when the frames become full and a conflict occurs, the LRUK replacer evicts a page from the frame according to a cache eviction policy. A cache eviction policy is just a rule that determines what data gets deleted from a cache in the event of a conflict. And in this course, we are using the LRUK replacement policy, which basically just stands for least recently used. So we're effectively evicting the most stale page in the pool in the event of a conflict. To assist with this process, the LRUK replacer object keeps track of timestamps of when the frames are accessed, so it always knows which one to evict next. I should also mention that when a page is evicted, it isn't just destroyed and lost forever. It gets safely flushed to disk, then deleted from memory to make room for another page. When we actually want to flush a page to disk or fetch a page from disk, we use the disk scheduler and the disk manager objects. First step is to send a disk request to the scheduler. The disk request is put into a shared queue which is processed concurrently on a background worker thread. This queue is used to handle potentially thousands of read and write requests in a short time frame. Once the disk request is popped from the queue, the disk manager is invoked. The disk manager is the component responsible for actually interfacing with the disk. This is actually already implemented for us, so we don't actually build it in this assignment, but we do build the other components above. Finally, the page is read from or written to the disk and the result is returned to the buffer pool as a future object. Then now that the page is properly in the buffer pool, BusTub can finally make use of it. I ran into a few challenges on the implementation of this assignment, which caused bugs that were pretty hard to debug. 
and I learnt a bunch by fixing those bugs. The first challenge I faced was a thread deadlock caused by nested lock acquisition. So a deadlock happens when a thread tries to acquire a lock that's essentially held by another thread, but that other thread is also trying to acquire a lock that may be held by the original thread or some other thread basically creating a situation where neither thread can proceed. In my case, one function acquired a lock, just like this function is acquiring a lock here, and then it called some other function that attempted to acquire that same lock, thereby creating a deadlock scenario, neither function could proceed. This issue revealed itself when I ran my tests because they would just hang during execution and they would never actually complete. To resolve it, I just refactored the code to inline the necessary functionality directly into the calling function, thereby avoiding having to call another lock acquiring function. So that was a good little learning curve for me. I ran into a second challenge when fetching a page from disk and assigning its data to the buffer pool accidentally using a shallow copy of the pointer. So you can see here, I was originally doing something like this. I was assigning the buffer pool pointer to point to the data that is fetched from disk. This seemed fine initially with no compiler errors and no IDE warnings. However, it led to subtle memory ownership issues where the memory would unexpectedly be destroyed elsewhere, causing the buffer pool to be left with a dangling pointer. You can see here the data fetched from disk is actually a unique pointer with sole ownership of the data and whenever this unique pointer gets destructed it destroys the memory and yeah leaves the buffer pool with a dangling pointer. I discovered this through lots of testing which highlighted the discrepancy in the stored values and to resolve this I switched to using a deep copy of the fetch memory ensuring that the buffer pool owned the memory and could manage its destruction properly. So this bug introduced me to the memcopy function which performs a deep copy of the memory unlike my previous approach of simply pointing two pointers at the same memory location. Another challenge I had was inside my implementation for the LRUK replacer object. As I explained, the LRUK replacer object keeps track of when each frame is accessed by recording the timestamp at the time of access. The problem was I was recording real timestamps in microseconds using the Chrono standard library. This was causing logical errors because sometimes different operations can occur on the exact same microsecond. What that's due to, I'm not 100% sure. It could be compiler optimizations like instruction batching or probably more likely just different threads accessing different frames at the exact same microsecond and the granularity of the timestamps just wasn't enough to distinguish between some operations and this was ca would cause issues where the wrong frame would get evicted at the wrong time and it actually manifested as weird behavior where sometimes all of my tests would pass then other times some of my tests would fail even though I hadn't changed anything in the code which was really frustrating for a while until I sort of cottoned on to what was happening here. So for it to work correctly, ideally, none of the timestamps should be equal to each other. They should all be unique, which led to the pretty simple solution of not storing real timestamps at all. Instead, I stored a counter variable, and every time I did a thread safe operation, I would increment the counter variable by one, which had the exact same effect as using all unique timestamps because every time this variable was accessed it had a new value and this worked because I didn't actually need to track the time of each frame access in reality I just needed to track the order of each frame access and this eliminated the possibility of you know different threads accessing different frames at the exact same microsecond so a pretty simple solution which I'm definitely going to be using in the future for things like this so that's it for this video keep an eye out for the next video where I'll be doing project number two which is an extendable hash index um, so looking forward to that thanks for watching